Hello and welcome to another album ranking. This one's going to be a bit different. Uh, thank you to commenter Jigurti Smith, if, if, if I pronounced Jigurti wrong, I do apologize, for uh, suggesting this. I did say in my reply to his comment that I haven't listened to every Genesis album. In fact, I think I've only listened to about half, maybe less than half. Um, straight through, I've listened to everything from Trespass to Wind and Mothering. I haven't heard their first album from Genesis to Revelations. Um, it just doesn't really interest me. I don't think I'd like it very much. And I've heard a lot of the hit singles. I've heard, you know, Follow You, Follow Me, Land of Confusion, Invisible Touch, uh, We Can't Dance. Sorry, I Can't Dance. Songs like that. But I don't really have any interest on listening to anything post Hackett. So I'm just not a fan of the, their more pop stuff. I've heard the singles. And if they're the best ones, then only imagine like I won't like the worst ones so uh, I've pretty much listened to every Genesis album I think I'll ever listen to straight through so today I'll just be talking about seven albums everything from Trespass up until Wind and Wuthering and uh, basically this is my ranking of them uh, so we've got seven albums five of which uh, include Peter Gabriel as the singer two of them have uh, Phil Collins but this is basically their prog stuff, if you know what I mean. They sort of stopped being prog after Steve Hackett left. Um, so this is their seven progiest albums. Um, at number seven, Trick of the Tail. Uh, a lot of people really, 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 really like this album. Um, I just didn't think it was that good. I mean, I bought it and I listened to it um, quite a while after I'd bought my last one. I had all five of the Peter Gabriel prog ones, you know, Trespass, The Lamelight Down Broadway, and I thought, That'll do me, I'm not going to buy any more Genesis. And then I thought, well, those other two they did after Peter left are prog. I'll give them a listen. Um, and Trick of the Tail is one, like one of their most popular albums ever. Um, I just don't think it's that good, to be honest. Um, Dance on a Volcano, track one, is one of the best Genesis songs ever, though, I will say. It's actually one of the best prog songs ever. I absolutely love it. It's absolutely fantastic. But the, the, the album quality just dips after that and it never reaches that level again. I think Squonk's decent and Los Endos is decent, but I just don't think the song's that, the, the album's that great overall. Um, I was quite disappointed by it. I just don't think it's a, that great an album. Um, I wouldn't say it's that progressive either, if you know what I mean. It, it doesn't have a sort of... Um, it doesn't reach forward the way the other albums did. Like, um, you know, the... Selling England by the Pound sort of had its slightly psychedelic elements and then the Lamb Lies Down Broadway really has a lot of psychedelic and electronic, electronic elements. This one doesn't really jump ahead musically, if you know what I mean. It doesn't really experiment very much. It's sort of, we've heard it before a wee bit, this Genesis sound, um, if you know what I mean. But uh, that's number seven. Number six, Wind and Wuthering. I would say that there isn't a single song on this as good as Dance on a Volcano. But all round, I think it's a better album. Um, consistently, it's more consistently good. Eleventh uh, Air of Mars, a good song. Uh, what Gorilla, I think, is a really good instrumental. Uh, all in the Mouse's Night's pretty good. Um, what's the one? Your own special way. I guess that's kind of a sort of love song hit single in a way. Oh, whether it was a hit or not, I don't know. But. It doesn't go too far into the sort of pop realms, if you know what I mean. Um, all around, I think it's a good album, and it's better than I thought it would be, because when I bought Trick of the Tail, I thought it was going to be really good, um, and I was disappointed, and I thought, well, this one's a lot less popular than Trick of the Tail, so it'll be even worse. But I actually prefer this album. Um, I, I also I really like the album art. It's, it's a really cool album cover. Uh, though the Trick of the Tail one is a bit more iconic. Um, all around, I think it's a, it's a decent album. Not fantastic by any means. Um, I just think it's okay. It's good. Um, obviously, all these these five are all the... If these two are, are um, seven and six, all these five are obviously all the Peter Gabriel ones. Number five, Nursery Crime. Uh, this, again, might be a bit controversial. Most people would probably say Trespass is the worst of the sort of Peter Gabriel ones. I disagree. Um, the Musical Vox was actually the song that got me into Genesis. Um, I was a fan of Genesis for quite a while. Um, no, um, I'd heard their pop stuff, I mean, before uh, any of their prog stuff. I'd heard their prog sort of hit singles, pop, sorry, hit singles, um, and thought they were okay. Um, and then when I got into prog, 
I sort of looked back, I went, oh, what their proggy albums are right at the beginning. Um, what songs should I start with? I wanted to start with a long one. I thought Suffer's Ready was, you know, a bit too long to start with. So I thought, uh, scroll through their albums on Wikipedia, what tracks are long. Musical Box, that's 10 minutes. Listen to it, absolutely loved it. It's probably my second favourite Genesis song behind um, Suffer's Ready. Uh, and I'd say the cinema show is maybe, tr maybe my third favourite. Um, it's actually really heavy. It's quite heavy metal at times. It's really hard rock, that song. Um, and it's quite surprising that Genesis, that Genesis would do that. They're actually, I'd say, quite heavy at times. Um, other than that, I'd say The Fountain of Salmacus Sam is a good one. And The Return of the Giant, Giant Hogweed. I'd say they're the only ones that are really, really good. Um, her Absent Friend isn't great. I'm not a fan of Harold the Barrel. Um, all around... I think Foxtrot sort of just took this album and made it a lot better in a way. It's sort of they sort of have a similar style and sound, um, but Foxtrot it just did everything this did, but much better in my opinion. Number four, Trespass, nineteen seventy. Um, this was their first prog rock album, and it's very very good. I'd say this was before. Phil Collins and Steve Hackett joined the band. It was Anthony Phillips, uh, I think, on guitar or drums at that point. Um, sorry, notifications again. I should turn my Wi-Fi off uh, every time I make a video. Uh, I'd say every song on this is good. Every single track. Um, Stagnation is my personal favourite. Very, very good. The Knife's good as well. White Mountain has a really cool keyboard. But do -do 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 and um, Looking for Someone's a good opening track. Um, I just think it's a really, really good album, and it's quite underrated. I'd say it's sort of, sort of forgotten amongst Genesis fans. It's sort of been like the, one of their worst of their prog albums. I'd say it's actually really good, and personally, I'd say it's better than Nursery Crime. There aren't any songs on this as good as Musical Box, but I'd say it's a more consistently good album. And I'm ranking them as albums, not as songs. You know, like the Musical Box is better than any song on this, but I'd say as an album, this is more consistently good. Right, already in the top three, because this is a really short list. Selling England by the Pound, the fan favourite. Most prog Genesis fans will agree that this is their best album, and it is tremendous. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the only weak song on it is More Fool Me, and that's it. Every other song on it's really good. Um, well, I'd say... I'd say um, the Battle of Epping Forest is a wee bit too wordy. I think there's a bit too much lyrics on it. There's not enough to, time to really enjoy the, the music, really. I think there's too much singing. Um, but the cinema show is my personal favourite, and I absolutely love the psychedelic keyboard solo near the end. Really wasn't surprising. I, really, I was really surprised to hear that when I first listened to it, because I never imagined Genesis as being like a psychedelic band. Uh, Dancing with the Moonlit, Moonlit Night is a good song, and I Know What I Like is one of their best singles. I, I absolutely love that song. Uh, Firth of Fifth has some beautiful guitar work. Uh, that's one of their best songs. Uh, fan favourites, uh, definitely. And Isle of Plenty is good as well. Um, it's a good sort of wee outro song, sort of brings you back to the beginning of the album. All around, it's, it was, I think it was their first concept album, and it has that sort of concept, sort of rounded sort of feel. Um, came out in 1973, where a lot of bands released their masterpieces that year, King Crimson, Pink Floyd. Um, not my personal favourite, but I can see why a lot of people really like this. Okay, uh, number two, Box Drop, 1972, the album that came out before uh, Selling, Selling England by the Pound. This album is ranked as number two for uh, a single reason, Suffer's Ready. It takes up half the album. I did say about Trespass and uh, Nursery Crime, I wouldn't rank an album. I'm ranking them as albums, not just songs. But Supper's Ready takes up half of the album, and it's their easily, in my opinion, Genesis' best song. It is 10 out of 10, perfect. So I need to give the album a lot of points for that. So already, it's off to a head start. And Side One is actually really, really good as well. A lot of prog rock albums... I would say a lot of them, but some of them fall under the sort of unfortunate um, sort of situation of having a 20 minute song on one side and short ones on the second side, or vice versa. And the 
the 20 minute one is absolutely brilliant but the other side is just nowhere near as good i'd say tarkus personally uh, uh, sort of for me sort of falls under that the tarkus suite is my personal favorite elp song it is absolutely perfect but the second half of the album it's good but it is nowhere near as good as the first side and it's there's a disconnect you know what i mean when you listen to it it feels weird sort of listening to it there are certain albums where you've got a 20 minute one and the the ones on the other side are just as good like in my opinion uh uh caress of steel by rush or hemispheres by rush you know, Olivia Strangiato is, I'd say, is actually better than the 18 minute song on the first side. But, you know, Watcher of the Skies, Get Him Out by Friday, songs like that, they're absolutely brilliant. So, it's a brilliant album from start to finish, and it finishes off with a 23 minute masterpiece that is Suffer Freddy. So, I'd have to say this, in my opinion, this is better than Selling Again by the Pound. So, that leaves only one. Uh, the Lamb Lies Down Broadway, number one, my personal favourite Genesis album. Um, this doesn't have Suppers Ready on it, obviously, but it is a double album, and it's brilliant from start to finish, in my opinion. I used to only like the first two sides, because I, I, th I thought the second side was a bit too out there. This, Sorry, um, the third and fourth sides were a bit too weird and out there. Sort of the same as The Wall. I grew up liking the first two sides of The Wall, and I, I didn't really like the second side. Of the, sorry, sides three and four, because I thought it was a bit too dark and a bit too weird. But now I can appreciate the whole thing, and same with this. Uh, I think it's absolutely brilliant from start to finish. It's such a brilliant through lesson. It's about 80 minutes long, you know, it's a double album, it's a concept album. Uh, it takes you through so many different styles. Uh, I personally don't have a problem with the lyrics, I think the concept is fine. But musically, all the band members have really matured at this point. They had on Supper's Ready, I'd say. Supper's Ready is the song where they all finally truly showed exactly what they can do. Selling England by the Pound, the musicianship is absolutely perfect. And on here it's the same. But I personally think that the note sequences and things like that are just a bit more interesting. Um, and even the shorter ones work with a sort of weird concept. I just absolutely love The Landmines Down Broadway and I don't think it gets enough credit. The Wall is sort of often considered like the concept album to end all concept albums. Prog was sort of a dick, it was sort of a genre of the 70s, and The Wall came out, like, November 30th, 1979, so it was, like, right at the end of the decade, it was like, that's, that's Prog done now, which obviously isn't true, Prog kept going and is very much alive today, but I think this album doesn't get enough credit for that, well, it's like, whatever The Wall did, The Lamb Lies Down Broadway kind of did it five years earlier, I'm not saying The Wall copied it or anything, it's, they're both totally different albums, but people talk about The Wall being this groundbreak, uh, sorry, groundbreaking, double album concept album and it's like you forget about this this came out in 1974 you know you know so that's all that's all i wanted to say i think the lamb is down broadway is really really good really really perfect um personal favorite songs actually the chamber of 32 doors which is one of the slower sort of less proggy songs i just think it's absolutely beautiful um silent sorrow and empty boats is really, really good as well but i'll get that to when i when i finally get around to reviewing it Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my Genesis ranking. And I'm sorry I haven't talked about the other albums, but they would all, I'm almost certain they'd all be from place eight to whatever. So uh, you haven't really missed much. But um, thanks for watching. And if uh, if you watch my other video, I'm wearing the same clothes because I actually just recorded that just before this. I'll be uploading two videos today. So just, just so you know, I don't wear the same clothes day after day after day. Just so you know. Right, see you later.